just dive in and, and get into the subject of the electrical worlds of ourselves? That specific question, why, why is it so important? And, you know, just the references in history and artwork and, and sculpture and various writings, just there's so much that's valuable that's kind of been discarded in the modern world that really was held to be very important for, for thousands of years. And I think looking at the aura is a really good example to, to see some of that as well. But now we know that there's an electrical, like almost like a Wi-Fi system around the human because they're measuring the electromagnetic field. They've got a machine called a squid uh, that detects the, the distance of the, if you say aura, it sounds mystical. If you say electromagnetic field, it sounds scientific and reasonable. Yeah. But essentially, it's the same idea, right? This is, again, why is the aura important? Because we're talking about one of the foods that the human needs to survive. You know, we know we need physical food. You can go without it for 30 or 40 days. Liquid foods, we can survive uh, about 10 days or two weeks, depending on the climate. Um, air is another type of food because we need it. It's a nutrition. So you've got the classic four elements of the, of the ancients, earth food, water food, air food. That we only survive a few minutes. Mm. But electrical food is actually a constant flow. This is one of the reasons we don't detect it. It's kind of like a fish in water. We don't detect it because it's we're in it all the time. There's a plasma around the planet of force. There's a plasma around us of force. But because it's flowing through all the time, we don't feel it. But we see it in those monitors at the hospital, right? There's a bleep, 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 re registering the electrical signal. Quality of physical food is important to us. In fact, you think about all the books on cooking that exist. I mean, wow. And then liquid foods, everybody's got their preferences. Air, are you a smoker or a non-smoker? All this type of thing. Fragrances, there's a whole industry. But if you get to, again, to electrical food, which is the most important considering that we only survive, we can't survive a second without it. Yeah. But on the west coast of Auckland, it's really rugged. You know, there's really wild surf and it's very desolate and, you know, especially if you go in the winter, you don't see many people. And, yeah. you know, I remember going and st staying at my favourite beach for a weekend, but of course th there's no cars or photocopiers or cell phone towers. So quite literally your, your aura, your electromagnetic bubble, spending two days there, all the energy that you've accumulated living in the city gets gets flushed out or washed out and you fill up the charge and the energy of that natural environment and the energy coming up through through the ground from the planet. I remember the contrast of having this fantastic weekend, but Monday morning, going to work, going into the office, uh, started at 8 a.m., still got to, you know, and you've got to drive through all the traffic to get there. But within an hour or so, that feeling was completely gone. And in that particular office, the way the seating was arranged, I must have drawn short straw because my desk was right next to the photocopier. You know, so <laughs> someone's coming in, printing off 500 copies of a letter, and all this electromagnetic uh, fumes and static just filling your aura back up. And, you know, by morning tea time, I just I could hardly remember my wonderful experience at the beach. I think most people have had similar experiences, but maybe not aware of the fact that, that that's quite literally your aura being filled up with something and then being emptied out and being filled up with something else. And like you say, even with our physical food, we're very careful what we eat, that it's nutritious and it's not toxic or anything that's going to make us ill. But um, what's not commonly understood is that it's exactly the same for the unseen worlds and what we take into our own aura because we carry it around with us um even facial markings like tattoos in a different light um uh, yes. new zealand not only new zealand the Celtics did it and other parts of the world did it uh the tattooing uh those tattoos and again this reflects the the decline in the ability to see these things because those tattoos can be seen electrically on the on the face have seen in New Zealand those actual spirals. Quite an amazing moment because you're yes. seeing a, a person talking and suddenly you're seeing it spirals on the face in the same places that the Maoris put these, these designs. So what it says is that at some time in the distant past, these were seen, these were detected. 
Yes. I think it's the same with the halo. You know, the halo turns up all around the world. And the, the Indians in Brazil particularly, there's so many tribes all around Brazil that had no contact with each other that wore the same type of headdress for the sheep, the chief, that really is, is like the best they could do to represent a halo. Yes. The, the halo is a particularly curious one because, again, there's the importance of the aura for general well-being. Because, again, if you look at Tai Chi or acupuncture, and which obviously we know there's something to it. In fact, in Brazil, acupuncture is now included in hospital treatments. Yes. So it works. But it's an electrical thing. It's, it's to do with getting force running through the system again. But that doesn't necessarily apply any sort of higher development or any advancement, right? Because that's just like, I feel well again, so I can go and do whatever, whatever I want to do. But when you talk about a halo, um, they, they obviously were trying to indicate that this person's got some other thing switched on, something, something else is going on. In other words, there's a general body aura and even auras within the aura because the lungs have an aura, the heart has an aura, the kidneys have an aura. Yeah, it can be a bit frustrating moving house and like, where have you put the toaster, you know, and you're trying to, trying to put your life back together again. And I was in the kitchen, I was really annoyed with her about something. And she walked into the kitchen and looked at me and I was just about to say something. And she said, don't you start with me. And I went, you know, it caught me off guard. I went, what? She said, there's a big patch of red energy around your head. <laughs> <laughs> and then I became, con you know, I became conscious of how I was feeling. And I, oh, yes. Sorry. Yeah, obviously, I got worked up about saying it's not important. But this is the reality of the human aura is that everything you think, everything you feel produces a color and produces an energy and a, and a, and a shape in the different zones of the aura. Uh, again, you can divide all this into impressions that we pick up from around us. Yes. Um, and that's why we like to be in a nice ecology and we want to go to the beach and we want to go to the park because we pick up yes. nice impressions. But the other thing that the human can do is bring in force through its thinking. Yes. And we know this because you can be in the nicest place but your thinking is somehow bringing in a, a worry and anger and you start to fill your aura with that that you're inducting. Again, looking at the unseen worlds, um, you take something like Lords, for example. Um, for thousands of years, that was a, a spring coming out of the ground, deep in the ground where people knew that when they went there, there was a certain type of energy and a certain sort of natural presence that refresh them, that cleanse them, and did unbelievable healings for people, you know, restored, because this is the days before hospitals and physicians and all the rest of it. Almost in every case, these ancient um, special sites of pilgrimage, as other waves of culture and civilization came along, they built on top of that. You know, the idea of um, certain monasteries or temples being built high up in the mountains that were away from the electromagnetic fog of the city all of these things are because they they understood the importance of being in the right place yeah a person goes to these places with their sort of intuition that it's gonna give them an energy refresh but not just a refresh like going down the local forest there's yeah. something no, extra right. it's, yes. It's yes. hoping to get a, a dollop <laughs> a dollop of extra stuff that it's harder to find in the general energies, even amongst planetary energy. But you can trace that all the way back, really, to Egypt, you know, where you had the idea of the pyramids. Uh, and if they know now that there wasn't a tomb, they didn't find a mummy in there. And most people pick up at some level. I think a lot of people pick up that it was some sort of energy machine. Yes. And the idea that they built such an incredible construction to induce a certain type of energy that would then allow people's electrical systems to to run on a certain level because for most of us living in a city you have special moments now and then don't you you have a, a special joy a special feeling now and then but what about living in a in a place that was designed in such a way that you could be feeling that sort of well-being on a constant basis. It's an incredible idea. 
it's, it's like a giant human system laid out in the desert. It's, it's a whole lost technology. So this, mm. this Dendera uh, temple, when you go in there, it's been specifically designed to really be tuned to a certain frequency, which affects your aura and produces a state. So it's very conditioning. Um, so it, the, the, the technology was that a person would be put on a certain frequency, it would cause a very, very still and fine state within their aura. And then the, um, the teachers or the priests of that temple would teach about that particular understanding to do with the stars and the planets and creation. It seems like there's a change of tide. It's like anything in nature. There's full moon and, you know, there's high tide and low tide and everything has its timings and rhythms. And it feels like things are starting to load again in terms of force, in terms of energy. Most of us are brought up the idea that everything's physical and you're a bit nutty if you think there's an unseen world or you feel or sense things. But by doing, even just starting into these exercises, it's like part of your brain circuitry wakes up and goes, oh, we're required again. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back into action. And so there's a whole reawakening process of parts of our brain that we don't normally use. It becomes very real because you start definitively feeling the difference in atmospheres, yeah. the state of your own aura. And then that brings, brings new challenges, dealing with other people, dealing with different atmospheres, dealing with uh, the question of the mind and the emotions with an awareness of the electrical element. It's, uh, but it's uh, absolutely worth it. Yeah, for sure.